KFI is later with Mo Kelly. We're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. We are following coverage of breaking news regarding a Metro bus crash. I saw NBC4 was just on it and they went away. But investigators are uh, seeing what happened with a fatal collision involving a Metro bus and pedestrian near the intersection of Azusa Avenue and Pepper Rock, excuse me, Pepper Brook Way. Let's go to... um, um hey Stefan, do we have any news coverage television coverage at this moment if not i don't think so right now okay they went away from it yeah okay but we're continuing to follow that story uh, a metro bus and a pedestrian collided near the intersection of azusa avenue and pepper brook way in the santa fe springs area and we know that the california highway patrol is on scene and from what it seems is the lead investigatory unit well Information is limited at this moment, but we're going to follow that. As more information does come in, we will make sure that you have it, of course, either in the KFI 24-hour newsroom with Mark Ronner or myself. You know we follow all things Metro. And so this was something which was happening real time. And so information is limited at the moment. We'll continue to follow that story. Other things we will be talking about tonight that we have more information The 7-Eleven, which was ransacked by some 50 juveniles on bikes. If you haven't seen the video, it is eye-opening. And I think it gives us some insight to how these these lootings, uh, these ransack, um, smash and grabs, however you want to uh, characterize them, how sophisticated they're really not. And you get to see, it seems like a more crime of opportunity and and of the moment than something which is really mapped out. We'll talk about that next segment. Governor Gavin Newsom has signed another plastic bag ban into law. I got thoughts about that and how this probably won't change much of anything. And did you see what Shohei Otani did this weekend again? My goodness. I am a baseball fan. I'm a Dodgers fan. And I don't remember anything like this. This is something which, and I may be guilty of recency bias, uh, this is probably one of the greatest moments in Dodger history. It's up there, and it maybe will surpass Fernando Mania. Um, It is really something what Shohei Otani is doing on the world stage in such dramatic fashion. And UCLA, here you go, Mark. Yes, Mo. This story is just for you. First, good evening. Hello, Mo. UCLA is going to become the first California university to offer chat GPT AI for all of, the, all of its students, uh, faculty, and counselors. What a well-rounded education that sounds like. I'm so envious of them. What could possibly go wrong? You had faculty trying to fight against AI because students were using it to cheat on exams and they were using it to turn in papers that they didn't write. What could possibly go wrong? Is this the time when I cave in to your pessimism and say we might as well just accept everything? No, no, no. I'm not saying you shouldn't accept it. I'm saying certain things are inevitable. I see. Okay. No, there are a lot of things that, oh, let me just say this. I thought it was inevitable, going back to cannabis, that it was going to be legalized for recreational purposes in California. Inevitable. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that I like it. Doesn't mean that I support it doesn't mean that I'll just accept it in my life and anyone else's close to me. So what you're saying is that you don't have any gummies on you that you're going to give to me. Nope. Thank you. (laughs) And if I did, I wouldn't say it over the air. (laughs) It's legal. I believe in the law. Yeah, I understand that. But so was alcohol. But it doesn't mean I want to give that to you over the air either. Well, you should give that to me as well now that we're talking. (laughs) How was your weekend, Mo? (laughs) Uh, It was okay. It was okay. I tried to get some work done. Other things got in the way. I'm still upset about my USC Trojans giving that game away in Michigan at the big house. That big run at the end of the game. They should have won that. And I'm still mad about that. I'm a big SC football fan. You and and I have such different lives. I was excited because uh, the new season of From started on Saturday. We have 100% different lives. Yeah, we do. We do. We do, and I'm getting into the second season of Tulsa King. That's something else I've started. There's a lot I need to catch up on, on not only what's on my, my DVR, but just other stuff I want to get to and watch because of recommendations from you, Tawala, and other people. So much 
good stuff that is out there for all the times that we complain about. There's nothing to watch or, you know, the quality of programming and streaming or the cost of streaming. No, there's a lot of good stuff out there. Don't sleep on that from. It's the best thing Stephen King never wrote. It's really fun. Okay. I'm, and I admit, I'm slow to things and I usually need a number of recommendations. Look, it took me four seasons for me to get into Stranger Things. And I'm glad I did. But when I wait... I get to binge and I get to see a lot of episodes back to back to back to back. So this is from season three, right? Uh, yeah. And between uh, from and uh, slow horses having to now that we're in the era where a whole season is dumped online at once. If you got to wait a week for an episode, it, it drives you nuts. I oh, can't yeah. Stand it. Yeah. And that's what I usually wait to the end of a lot of series because like I did with Succession, I didn't start watching that until the very last season. And it took me about three weeks to watch the first six or so seasons. And then I got to finish it in real time with just about everyone else where the last three episodes, I think I had to wait week by week basis. But other than that, it was a very enjoyable binge watch. Yeah. I'm going to wait till I'm hospitalized to watch succession. Otherwise it just doesn't have much interest for me. I've got to be a captive audience for that. Well, that's kind of how to all he should tell you the story. If he hasn't already, how he fell in love with law and order. He was in the hospital and he was force-fed Law & Order all the seasons over the years. And so he watched Law & Order all day, all night. Because I think it was a marathon or something. Oh, Law & Order's comfort viewing. Are you kidding me? Right, but he was saying he wouldn't have watched it on his own. But since he had a literal IV in his arm and he wasn't going anywhere for the next few days. Yeah, why not? I'm I'm pro that. It's like Alex in a Clockwork Orange except being forced to watch something good. You know, I gotta, yeah, I gotta say this. I was never... A real big fan of that movie. It's absolutely brilliant, and I'm happy to talk about it w with you anytime. I'm not sure it's appropriate for the airwaves. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, to me, I wasn't wowed when I saw it. I would rather see um, Space Odyssey 2001 than A Clockwork Orange. Well, I'll just say this. Kubrick is such a genius that it's worth reevaluating and coming back to over the years. I think it's incredible, and I think it's one of the best things Malcolm McDowell ever did. Okay. All right, it's fair. You're wrong, but it's, a, it's fair. You know? <laughs> Good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's, and thank you once again for sitting in for me as I was sitting in for Tim. You and Tiffany did a wonderful job. I hope you received great feedback. Uh, thank you very much. That means a lot to me, seriously. Uh, we uh, both had a lot of fun doing it and hope we get to do it again. I'm quite sure you will. It's later with Mo Kelly. When we come back, we're going to get into what happened at that 7-Eleven, which was ransacked by a mob on bicycles, just about 50 different juveniles. KFI AM640, we're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM640. And it started off with me making a joke out of it, how 7-Elevens were being robbed. And I'm saying, like, you don't hear about this regarding other convenience stores. You don't hear about this with Circle K. You don't hear about this with AM, PM. And my point was there must be something connected to 7-Eleven, how it's laid out. It must be perceived as some sort of easier target because they're the only ones getting hit. I'm quite sure there are other convenience stores out there. Yes, there's a 7-Eleven just about on every corner. But damn, every single week, one is getting hit. Well, on Friday night, I don't know if you've seen the video, but a group of juveniles, youths, they seem like they're in the 15 to 17 year old range. They were all on bicycles and they ransacked a 7 Eleven store in the Pico Robertson area around 7 30 p.m. We're not talking about 12 midnight. We're not talking about 2 3 in the morning. This is 7 30 on a Friday night where there are plenty of people around. There are plenty of cameras. There are plenty of potential witnesses and people saw this happening in real time, which, which is really strange to me because no one. Well, I shouldn't say that. We don't know of anyone who submitted their video to the police. And even if they didn't, these dumbasses actually uploaded the video to social media bragging about what they did. It's safe to assume they will be caught. But here is the audio to the video and to paint a picture for you. The video is right there in the parking lot. It's not from across the street. It is right in front of the 7-Eleven. And you get to see all these kids, my word, rolling up on bikes. And then it seemed like a spur of the moment to a decision to run into the 7-Eleven, ransack it, take as much as they can, 
And it seemed like the idea was, well, if we all run in together, they can't possibly catch all of us. I don't know if anyone was hurt in the process, but from the video, it seemed like it was not coordinated other than they were all riding together and they got the bright idea to do this at an hour where most people saw them. And then they were even dumber after that to upload it to social media. It's Friday night. Do you know where your children are? Dozens of young people on bicycles stormed a 7-Eleven convenience store in Pico Robertson this Friday evening, stealing whatever they could get their hands on, including food and lottery tickets, stuffing their shirts and sweatshirts and pockets with the merchandise, ransacking and trashing the place in a matter of minutes. When it was over, the scene inside was disarray. The violent crowd scattered into the darkness as quickly as it arrived, with all of the criminal activity captured on camera and posted on social media. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? They posted it all on social media, which means that they're only one degree of separation away from the people who actually did it, or it was done by the people who actually did it. It shouldn't be too hard to figure out. And that's what and this goes back to the whole surveillance state that we have. You know they're like cameras everywhere right you know that the cameras can track where you rode your bike home if you're on your bike you're in a certain um radius of that 7-eleven you're not two or three miles away you're probably like a half a mile away and you uploaded it to social media i'm not going to say that criminals should be smart i'm saying don't be extra dumb and there is a difference if you're going to do it at a time in which most people can see you yeah i know you tried to hide your face but it's 7 30 at night there are a lot of people around somebody recognized you probably saw the video and then saw you riding down the street all of the criminal activity captured on camera and posted on social media i know when i was that age i got into mischief but I didn't ever really have the idea or desire to do something criminal like that. I would like to believe I am part of that majority. And here is where we have this very, what I would say, a complex dialogue about crime. Yes, violent crime is down. The numbers are the numbers. Violent crime is down in California and nationally. But the brazen nature of the type of crime, the aspect of property crime is something altogether different. Now, if we look at the numbers as an aggregate, we can say crime is down as an aggregate. But we weren't dealing with this type of crime 5, 10, 15 years ago. Now, statistically, I don't know where this falls. I don't know if it gets uh, looped in with just property crime or what. I don't know if it's considered petty theft. I know that this type of criminality is new, numbers aside. So both things can be true. We can say statistically, crime is down, statistically. But we should also um, acknowledge that this type of stuff is new. This is something we haven't seen before. And also, if you were to go into convenience stores or um, not even liquor stores, just like um, Rite Aid or, or any other grocery stores, more, more products are locked down than ever before. Now, if you lived in, in the hood, that's nothing new. But now it's, it's spread out into suburbia. And I think that puts a different spin on it because a lot of people are not used to that. If I were to walk into a Rite Aid and I have to get someone's help so I can get some deodorant from the cabinet, for me, that's Tuesday. That's not anything new. But if you happen to live in Culver City or you lived on the west side or in somewhere in Orange County, you may think, wait a minute, I've never had to deal with this before. I've never experienced this before. What do you mean I have to push this button and ring a buzzer for someone to come from the other side of the store just so I can get some shampoo? Yes, I know it's different for you. And maybe that's why it feels different and why you may say, Mo, crime can't be down because I'm dealing with this. I've never dealt with this before. Yeah, but um, there's a difference between statistics and the type of crime that we're dealing with. What did you see, Tawala? It's interesting. When I saw this incident at 7-Eleven, it took me back to a lot of the incidents that we saw arise Within the Black Lives Matter protests where we saw in some instances where riots 
broke out of those um, protests and we saw individuals having nothing to do with Black Lives Matters or marching or police brutality or anything like that going in and smashing stores. I remember there was a huge incident at the Grove far removed from any Black Lives Matter incident. I remember And they were going into stores and smashing windows. And I think that when you saw the individuals committing those crimes, you saw individuals that had nothing to do with any type of movement, but also noticing, wait a minute, nothing is happening. And we're seeing more and more and more, especially in California. Oh, because they got away with it then. Because they got away with it then. It almost started to trend because that is where we started to see this take off. And I think that, yes, in California, we have some of the most lax laws when it comes to what right now would be considered petty theft because if a hundred people go in and grab something small, that's considered petty theft. But as a whole, it's grand theft if they take everything in the damn store. Right. Thousands and thousands of dollars of damage, vandalism, and theft. But individually, if you got 50 people, they only got, let's say, $75 worth of merchandise each. Right. <laughs> so that, that's why these these smash and grab robberies, why they're so impactful and why they're actually, to me, so heinous because I believe that these things are organized. There's no way that these kids are just showing up and they keep running in and just grabbing everything they can and, and everyone's just like... Well, there, there are know. levels of organization to this. There's there's a level of organization that someone is orchestrating. I don't know because you stealing a lot of product that you can't resell or move, you know... The, ransacking a 7-Eleven, I don't know how you can turn that into actual money. Yeah. that yeah, That's my thing. Yeah. Now, if you were to hit a clothing store or a jewelry store, that's a different animal. And you, and we have heard about how that merchandise was trying to be moved online and they, they found people who were trying to fence it and so forth. I don't know if you can fence ho-hos. Well, no, but those uh, phone uh, cases... You know, 7-Eleven starts to sell those little, little minor electronic things. To me, all of these things are little items that as a whole can add up to something. Well, we'll see. But these kids, and I call them kids because they're not adults, they're going to get caught because there are too many ways in which police can find out. But then the larger question is, yes, were they somehow prodded to do it? Were they coached to do it? Or is it something they just decided, well, all of us are here. We don't have anything else to do on a Friday night. There is a 7-Eleven. Why don't we just go run in? Because, I mean, for us, it was like dine and ditch. It's like if we all leave the Denny's at the same time, they can't catch all of us. But it wasn't the same thing as ransacking Denny's. Right. And I still owe that Denny's in Torrance. <laughs> to Mall. One day I'm going to go, I swear, if you don't know, I dine and ditch from Denny's. I was in my early 20s. It was after coming back from the Red Onion in uh, Redondo Beach. And it was real late. And the service was horrible. And we waited and waited and waited to get our food. And we waited and waited and waited at the front uh, cash cashiers, uh, cash register to pay the bill. And I said, look, I'm going to wait another two minutes. And then we're going to leave. And there was only like one person who was serving the whole restaurant. It, it, you know, there was no way that... It could accommodate us. But it was it was like a Friday or Saturday night. You should have had more people there. Anyhow, we walked out very slowly. She finally realized that it was us, and she ran after us. We got in the car and drove away. And I've been guilty about that for the past, I don't know, 30 years. So I thought I was going to go in there and just leave a 20 on the counter for somebody. Just for anybody? Well, I don't. I, I, I would she hope may still be there. I hope not, unless she is like the owner. If she's still working at Denny's thirty years later, there's something wrong with her life. Oh, damn. If she's a, if she's I, still look, they even have those. She, what if she's a manager. Thirty years later, you can make good money as a manager. You like can. Denny's. I just I I wish better for her after thirty years. What if she got fired because of what you did, and her life entered a downward spiral that she never recovered from? What if she's at the right track right now because of you? For those who don't know, that's a strip club. <laughs> and don't ask me why I know that. Is First King still open? Or did they close that and, and Barbary Coast? I think both those good. No, no, no. I think uh, Barbary got redone. Okay. I think that's back under you know under new management. Yeah, they, better, they have better wings, yeah. And how do you know, Stefan, other than it being in our neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> that's a black strip club. Yeah. <laughs> KFI AM 640. We're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. We have a plastic ban update when we come back. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. And I have 
mixed feelings about any plastic bag ban. I think it's paying lip service to the idea of eradicating all this waste, which doesn't naturally degrade on its own and is poisoning our oceans. I, I, I get all the, the thoughts behind it. I just don't believe, like put it this way, having, I don't know, one less cupcake per month is not going to do much for your bottom line, or in this case, your waistline. It's not really going to change your weight. It's really not going to change your cholesterol. It's really not improving your diet. If you're having nine or ten cupcake, cupcakes a, a month, then yeah, just one fewer, one less is not going to make any difference. But nonetheless, Governor Gavin Newsom has signed this latest plastic ban into law, and it goes a little something like this. Now, even though the governor signed this bill into law yesterday, it doesn't actually go into effect until January of 2026. So we've got this some time here. But here's the thing. Back in 2014, so a decade ago, California actually passed another law in order to ban plastic I bags. I know. I've made but reference to it. ever since then, environmental groups say that we have been using more plastic bags as a state to levels we've never seen before. I know, All right, right? Let's go back to 2016 because this is important here because okay. we might be saying, let's go back well, to 2016. We already passed this law. Why do we need to pass another one? That's a great question. Why do we need to pass another one? In 2014, California became the first state to ban single-use plastic bags. Hey, we were the first. Oh, yeah, no one cares. Prompting states across the country to do the same thing. But here's what actually happened. When the state banned single-use plastic bags, they still allowed customers to purchase those reusable plastic bags for a small fee. I loved those single use plastic bags, those heavy duty ones, the ones that you like to take a shower in and not get your hair wet, the ones that you can pick up all your dog poop with and not have to worry about getting your hands dirty. I love those. They aren't single use in my house. I use them as trash can liners, use them for all sorts of things, use them for storage in the house. Who uses them only once? Who? Not me. I use them at least twice, at least twice. Sometimes three or four times. They have all sorts of uses. And actually, the paper ones are the ones that usually break before I even get to the car. They've become more and more flimsy over the years and less and less reliable. I would much rather have the plastic bag, which is not going to break, that I can reuse again, as opposed to the paper, which may not last walking 10 paces and I have to throw away as soon as I unload my groceries. Those are those thicker bags. You typically have the option between buying those high-density, thick plastic bags or paper bags at checkout. I did. But a new report out this year finding the amount of plastic bag waste in California is actually going up. And even though stores say you can recycle those thicker plastic bags, most people weren't. And according to an LA Times report, many recycling companies don't even have a program to recycle those bags. <gasps> This new law aims to dramatically reduce plastic bag pollution. Can anyone remember the last time they were actually asked the question, paper or plastic? When I went to Albertsons yesterday in Gardena, telling all my business, when I went to Albertsons, there was no option for paper. It was just plastic. It was just the thick plastic bags. That was it. And I still had to pay for them. But I was not given any option for paper. And I can't think of the last time or place I, I do shop at Albertsons, I shop at Vons, and I shop at, shop at Ralph's, depending on where I am in the city and, you know, my schedule. No one has ever asked paper or plastic. They just say, would you like a bag for this? And I only see plastic. Have I missed out on some sort of hidden option? Is this like the hidden menu and in and out where if I have to say a, a special keyword and say animal style, they'll give me a paper paper bag? Is that what we're doing here? No, maybe you just look like the kind of guy who enjoys plastic bags, and they're profiling you. What are you you're, trying to say? Enjoy. Maybe you're easy to profile. What, what do you mean, enjoy plastic bags? It well, seems like you, a loaded comment. You you enjoy uh, owning and perhaps wearing plastic bags. <laughs> <laughs> they, can, I, they can tell this about you, and they don't have to ask if you want paper, because there's something about you, Morris Kelly, that just screams, give me plastic. Well, when I look at Reggie, who's bagging the groceries, yes. he's going to be Reggie tonight. Uh-huh. I don't see any plastic around. I mean, excuse me. I don't see any paper around. I only see plastic, and they've already opened up the plastic bag, and there's a stack of plastic bags. Or if you go to the self-checkout, there's only plastic. There is only plastic at the self-checkout, 
and and that's if the person who's assigned to work self checkout is actually going to be there to help you. Because every time I push that button for help, nobody ever shows up. Nobody. Nah, the whole self checkout thing's a scam too. Wait a minute. They're telling me that I cannot self checkout my alcohol there. No, nah. I, I can't do gift cards there. Well, it's not a self checkout then. And not only that, they're saving money by having you check your own groceries, but that doesn't seem to lower the price of the groceries for some reason. No, you get no type of a discount. You get less help, no discount, shoddier service. I almost said the other word. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's fun to scan the things across the little beep thing if you're a child, but for the rest of us, uh, I, don't, I don't really see the advantage of it. It's always difficult, especially if you have any produce, because they, they want to make it like it's easy, but it's not easy. Trying to find some apples at self-checkout, is it Washington Delicious or is it this kind or is it that kind? That, no, it's way too much work. I would rather have someone just scan it and key in the apples by themselves. Yeah, but then they would have to pay that person a living wage and, and benefits. I don't think you feel sorry enough for the corporations who are doing this. That has nothing to do with me. I'm already shopping. I'm already spending money. So whether I end up at self-checkout or whether I end up in a cashier lane with Rhonda, that's going to be Rhonda and Reggie. Rhonda, Rhonda. <laughs> Albertsons, Ralph's, Vaughn's, Pavilions, they all make the same amount of money, whatever's in my basket. This is going to be the same. So it, it shouldn't really matter. I should at least get the same level of service. That's all I'm saying. Well, one would think. Also, I hate the idea of you being inconvenienced by not having access to plastic bags. It wouldn't I mean, be. What, what, how are we going to cope no, with this? It's going to be a disappointment, not an inconvenience. It'd be very disappointing. Oh, even worse. You know, oh. and we're going to get inferior paper bags. It'd be different if we had the ones from like the 1970s and 80s. Those were durable, but these are not durable. What are we going to do? Suffer. Yeah. I'm going to suffer. Yeah, this is And you're mocking me. And it's, it's, no, 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 no. I wouldn't not. do that. I would never do that. It's later with Mo Kelly. Keep on mocking. Never. We're live everywhere. The iHeartRadio app. We got to talk Otani and the Dodgers when we come back. It's a fantastic weekend. In fact, the Dodgers are playing right now. Maybe there will be more magic, but we'll play some of the previous magic from yesterday. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. I am a sports fan through and through. I'm an L.A. Dodger fan through and through. As a person who works in news media, I'm always conscious of, I'll say, special moments. I remember when I was sitting on my college trunk at Georgetown University, back when the Dodgers were playing the Oakland A's in 1988 and watching the Kirk Gibson home run from 2,500 miles away in Washington, D.C., but watching it live. I live for those types of moments where you get to see history, sports history, happening in real time. I love watching greatness at work. And Shohei Otani, I was ambivalent on when he came to the Dodgers. I didn't know if he was the real deal or not. I knew that he was a special player, but I didn't know if he was going to be a legendary player. For the almost billion dollars that the Dodgers are paying Shohei Otani. Yes, I know a lot of the money is deferred until later in the contract. But if you use history as a guide, when players sign these big deals, they never usually measure up to the enormous contract in which they're being paid. Maybe they'll have a few years and then they begin to peter off because, you know, they get to be past their physical prime. They start breaking down. And it seems like, okay, well, the team didn't get their money's worth. Of course, it's too early to tell with Shohei Otani. But this is the best debut I've ever seen in my life for someone who's been traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yes, he's already passed the 50-50 plateau of 50 home runs and 50 stolen bases in the same season. Never been accomplished by anyone. And very few players can say that they have 50 home runs in a given season and 50 stolen bases in a different season, except for maybe Barry Bonds and a few other people. But Shohei Otani has had a legendary, historic season in baseball, and it's not through yet he still has a chance to hit 55 55 55 home runs and 55 stolen bases i was listening to the game on am 570 la sports but i was also watching the feed the national feed for the game this is sunday baseball game of the week 
I want to play for you the national feed so you can feel the energy of what the rest of the country is experiencing. Shohei Otani came up in the bottom of the ninth. The Dodgers were behind by two, and then he decided to do this. Bottom of the ninth, about to begin. The Dodgers trailing by one. It's 5-4 Rockies. My bad. They're trailing by one. I messed it up. Bottom of the ninth, about to begin. The Dodgers trailing by one. It's 5-4 Rockies. The Dodgers have to come back if they want to hold on to a three-game lead in front of the Padres. Coming to town Tuesday. San Diego won. It's down to two and a half. Top of the order for the Dodgers. Otani, Betts, Freeman. Facing the right-hander, Seth Halverson, who faced the top of the order yesterday in the ninth inning. This 2-1 pitch. Otani smokes one right center field. Otani is inevitable. Remember the other night I was talking about how the great announcers like Vince Scully let the moment do all the talking, get out of the way, and let us as the audience just hear the crowd? That was a good use of the moment to let the scene do all the talking. And then after Otani does that to tie the game, the next batter just for an icing on top of the cake Mookie Betts comes up and think everyone is still thinking about Shohei Otani. And Mookie says, just F it. Let me just hit a home run so we can all go home now. Now Mookie Betts. Fly ball. Left field. At the wall. We are living through history. We are living through sports history. This is one of the greatest, uh, greatest, I'll say, moments, greatest seasons in Dodger history and baseball. We should recognize it as it is happening. KFI AM 640, we're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. News without the skew. KFI. And KOST HD2. Los Angeles. Orange County. Live.